Hi, I'm so happy that you're here. This book is called Mufaro's Beautiful Daughters. This is an African tale written by John Steptoe and published by Scholastic. Look how pretty this daughter is. But he has two beautiful daughters. This book, Mufaro's Beautiful Daughters, was inspired by a folk tale collected by G.M. Teal and published in 1895 in his book, Kafir Folk Tales. Details of the illustrations were inspired by the ruins of an ancient city found in Zimbabwe and the flora and fauna of that region. The names of the characters from the Shona language, Mufaro means happy man, and Nyasha means mercy, and Manyara means ashamed. And Nyoka, oh, excuse me, Nyoka means snake. The author wishes to thank Niamani Mutima and Ona Kwanale the Afro at the Afro-American Institute and Jill Penfold of the Zimbabwe Museum for their helpful assistance in, in the research for this book. This book is dedicated to the children of South Africa. John Steptoe, Mufaro's Beautiful Daughters, An African Tale, published by Scholastic Incorporated. Look how beautiful this book is. I love it. A long time ago, in a certain place in Africa, a small village lay across a river and half a day's journey from a city where a great king lived. A man named Mufaro lived in this village with his two daughters, who were called Mun Munyara and Nayasha. Everyone agreed that Munyara and Nayasha were very beautiful. Munyara was almost always in a bad temper. Oh, you can see it on her face. She teased her sister whenever her father's back was turned. And she had been heard to say, Someday, Nyasha, I will be a queen, and you will be a servant in my household. If that should come to pass, Nyasha responded, I will be pleased to serve you. But why do you say such things? You are clever and strong and beautiful. Why are you so unhappy? Because everyone talks about how kind you are, and they praise everything you do, Manyara replied. I'm certain that Father loves you the best. But when I am queen, everyone will know that your silly kindness is only weakness. You know what? She doesn't really look beautiful in this picture. But little sister does. Nyasha was sad that Manyara felt this way, but she ignored her sister's words and went about her chores. Nyasha kept a small plot of land on which she grew millet, sunflowers, yams, and vegetables. She always sang when she worked, and some said it was her singing that made her crops more bountiful than everyone else's. Millet is for the birds. That's what birds eat. One day, Nyasha noticed a small garden snake resting beneath a yam vine. Good day, little Nyoka, she called to him. You are welcome here. You will keep away any creatures who might spoil my vegetables. She bent forward to give the little snake a loving pat on the head and then returned to her work. From that day on, Nyoka was always at Nyasha's side when she tended her garden. It was said that she sang all the more sweetly when he was there. Look how beautiful her garden is. Mufaro knew nothing of how Manyara treated Nyasha. Nyasha was too considerate of her father's feelings to complain. 
and Manyara was always careful to behave herself when Mufaro was around. Early one morning, a messenger from the city arrived. The great king wanted a wife. The most worthy and beautiful daughters in the land are invited to appear before the king, and he will choose one to become queen, the messenger proclaimed. Mufaro called Manyara and Nayasha to him. It would be a great honor to have one of you chosen, he said. Prepare yourselves to journey to the city. I will call together all our friends to make a wedding party. We will leave tomorrow as the sun rises. But my father, said Manyara sweetly, it would be painful for either of us to leave you, even to be the wife to the king. I know Nyasha would grieve to death if she were parted from you. I am strong. Send me to the city and let poor Nyasha be happy here with you. Lafaro beamed with pride. The king had asked for the most worthy and the most beautiful. No, Manyara, I cannot send you alone. Only a king can choose between two such worthy daughters. Both of you must go. Ooh, I don't think that's Manyara's plan. That night, when everyone was asleep, Manyara stole quietly out of the village. She had never been in the forest at night before, and she was frightened but her greed to be the first to appear before the king drove her on. And in her hurry, she almost stumbled over a small boy who suddenly appeared standing in the path. Please, said the boy, I am hungry. Will you give me something to eat? I have only brought enough for myself, Manyara replied. But please, said the boy, I am so very hungry. Out of my way, boy. Tomorrow I will become your queen. How dare you stand in my path? Oh, look at how sad the little boy looks. Look at his ears. That's a little bit of a trick. After traveling for, for what seemed to be a great distance, Manyara came to a small clearing. There, silhouetted against the moonlight, was an old woman seated on a large stone. The old woman spoke. I will give you some advice, Manyara. Soon after you pass the place where two paths cross, you will see a grove of trees. They will laugh at you. You must not laugh in return. Later, you will meet a man with his head under his arm. You must be polite to him. How do you know my name? How dare you advise your future queen? Stand aside, you ugly old woman, Manyara scolded, and then rushed on her way without looking back. Just as the old woman had foretold, Manyara came to a grove of trees, and they did indeed seem to be laughing at her. I must be calm, thought Manyara thought. I will not be frightened. She looked up at the trees and laughed out loud. <laughs> I laugh at you, trees, she shouted and hurried on. It was not yet dawn when Manyara heard the sound of rushing water. The river must be up ahead, she thought. The great city is just on the other side. But there, on the rise, she saw a man with his head tucked under his arm. Manyara ran past him without speaking. A queen only acknowledges those who please her, she said to herself. I will be queen. I will be queen, she chanted, and she hurried on toward the city. Nyasha woke at the first light of dawn. She put on her finest garments. She thought just how her life might be changed forever beyond this day. I much prefer to live here. She admitted to herself, I'd hate to leave this village and never see my father or sing to little Nyoka again. Her thoughts were interrupted by loud shouts and a commotion from the wedding party assembled outside. Manyara was missing. Everyone bustled about, searching and calling for her. 
When they found her footprints on the path that led to the city, they decided to go on as planned. The wedding party moved through the forest. Brightly plumed birds darted around in the cool green shadows beneath the trees. Though anxious about her sister, Nyasha was soon filled with excitement about all there was to see. They were deep in the forest when she saw the small boy standing by the side of the path. You must be hungry, she said, and handed him a yam she had brought for her lunch. The boy smiled and disappeared as quietly as he had come. Later, as they were approaching the place where the two paths crossed, the old woman appeared and silently pointed the way to the city. Nyasha thanked her and gave her a small pouch filled with sunflower seeds. The sun was high in the sky when the party came to the grove of towering trees. Their uppermost branches seemed to bow down to Nyasha as she passed beneath them. At last, someone announced that they were near their destination. Nyasha ran ahead and topped the rise before the others could catch up with her. She stood transfixed at her first sight of the city. Oh, my father, she called. A great spirit must stand guard here. Just look at what lies before us. I never in all my life dreamed there could be anything so beautiful. Wow, look at the city in the distance. It's very beautiful. Arm in arm, Nyasha and her father descended the hill, crossed the river, and approached the city gate. Just as they entered through the great doors, the air was rent by piercing cries, and then Yara ran wildly out of a chamber at the center of the enclosure. When she saw Nyasha, she fell upon her sobbing. Do not go to the king, my sister. Oh, please, father, do not let her go, she cried hysterically. There's a great monster there and a snake with five heads. He said he knew all my faults and that I displeased him, and he would have swallowed me alive if I had not run. Oh, my sister, please do not go inside that place. It frightened Nyasha to see her sister so upset, but leaving her father to comfort Manyara, she bravely made her way to the chamber and opened the door. Hmm, I wonder what she's gonna find. On the seat of the great chief's stool lay the little garden snake. Nyasha laughed with relief and joy. <laughs> My little friend, she exclaimed. It's such a pleasure to see you. But why are you here? I am the king, Nyoka replied. And there, before Nyoka's eyes, the garden snake changed shape. Wow. I am the king. I am also the hungry boy with whom you shared a yam in the forest and the old woman to whom you made a gift of sunflower seeds. But you know me best as Nyoka. Because I have been all of these, I know you to be the most worthy and most beautiful daughter in the land. It would make me very happy if you would be my wife. Wow, look how handsome the king is. And so it was that long that a long time ago, Nyasha agreed to be married. The king's mother and sisters took Nyasha to their home, and the wedding preparations began. The best weavers in the land laid out their finest cloth for her wedding garments. Villagers from all around were invited to the celebration, and a great feast was held. Nyasha prepared the bread for the wedding, feast from millet that had been brought from her village. Mufaro complained to all who would hear him that he was the happiest father in the land, for he was blessed with two beautiful and worthy daughters, Nyasha the queen and Manyara, a servant in the queen's household. Ooh, that was not Manyara's claim. Wow. And it looks like Nyasha and the king were 
very happy together. The end. Wasn't that just the most gorgeous book? It was so beautiful. And look at Aisha tending her garden. This edition is available for distribution only through the school market, scholastic.com. This is one of my favorite books because it's so beautiful and because it tells a wonderful story about two, sister, two sisters, one who's kind and gentle and generous and the other who is selfish and ugly and mean. I hope you'll join me the next time. Thank you. Bye, everybody.